Hello, beautiful, beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner beauty, skincare, and on and on and on. I'm back today to review the new Crunchy mm -hmm, Cat, the Crunchy Beautifully Flawless Foundation. This is the newest formula. Their first formula was one of my top favorites. So everybody was asking me to try, well, everybody, you guys were asking me to try the new version, and I did. And well, I have some things to tell you about it. Stick around and let's get into it. Also want to note that I purchased this product so you're getting my 100% honest opinion. Nobody's paying me to say the following. Real quick, if you want to keep seeing honest reviews like this one, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. As always, don't forget to subscribe. All right, I have both of these in 03. More to come on that. This again is the Crunchy Beautifully Flawless Foundation. It is $50. They say that it's not just makeup, it's skincare. There are 10 shades available. It is gluten-free, cruelty-free, Leaping Bunny certified, vegan, and uses non-GMO ingredients. So they're kind of covering a lot of bases there. Here are the key claims for this foundation. These are the things that I've been testing it against. It is supposed to be first and foremost long wearing. Well, not first and foremost, but they mentioned that. It layers and mixes perfectly with skincare. It <laughs> She's just so happy to be a part of the video. It is a high pigment foundation and gives you the perfect balance between satin and semi-matte in terms of finish. So did those things come true? What did I think? First things first, let's go through the scorecard. If you're new here, you're gonna hear me say scorecard. It is the foundation of all of my reviews. It's what keeps me pretty objective, as objective as possible. These reviews don't happen in an hour. These are at least two day reviews, sometimes two week long reviews, and I condense them down into under 10 minutes to make your life a little bit easier because I know that it can be a frustrating journey trying to switch over to greener, cleaner beauty. Let's start with the first question on all scorecards, they're a little bit different by category, but the first question for all of them is, how do the ingredients look, right? So I compared the first formula to the new formula, which I already mentioned. I'm not gonna go ingredient by ingredient, that would take forever. I will drive you to the scorecard post back on the website. You can see it all in front of you. Oh, the by the way, I did an app review, so it was on EWG, but for the old formula, Think Dirty, it wasn't on there at the time of this filming. And then Skin Carissima had it, but they had the old formula, so those aren't updated yet. Which kind of makes me feel good about doing reviews like this, because it's obviously not on those apps yet, and I recommend those apps, but sometimes you just need to dig in yourself. Uh, so I'm doing that for you. The gist of it is there were a lot of ingredient changes. There's some new additions here. There's a, a line item for alcohol. There's some different preservatives. They all rank very low on the EWG scale. Want to learn more about that, again, check out the post on my site. It is a starting point for research as far as I'm concerned. It is not the end all be all, in my opinion, not a cosmetic chemist, by the way just putting it out there. So while they're still low on EWG, there were a lot of changes. And when I first tried it, I could already tell with one swipe of the application that the formula had shifted quite a bit. So this isn't one of those, we made a couple of tweaks. In my opinion, it had a significant overhaul. Mm, it had me going, hmm. Next up, coverage, how is it? Okay, the coverage here, and I will show you a before, a swatch, and an after, but also I'm gonna show you applying it and you'll see not only the new formula but the old formula and I'll get there in a second. The coverage here and I'm comparing it to its previous formula because I loved it. I was a huge fan of it. It feels more like a smooth layer on top of the skin. It does provide very solid coverage here. It evens out very well. It is less natural looking, natural looking compared to the previous formula. The previous formula would go on, provide really solid coverage, but it almost looked like it would melt into the skin and transform the skin. It's just a slight differentiation there, but for me, it meant a lot. I will get to my personal final verdict in a second, but I want you to understand the difference between the old formula and the new formula. Overall, for coverage, I gave it a three out of five on the scorecard, and I will tell you more about that in a second. Does it blend and build well? I think that it blended well with a kabuki brush. It took a little bit more elbow grease to get this to blend into my skin, combination skin, it did blend evenly. The previous formula, I would just use my fingers, swipe it on, kind of press it in, and it just worked. So that was a difference. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just, 
personally, I, I'm lazy about these application techniques sometimes. I don't, want, I don't want to work for it, especially if I'm spending $50. So overall, got a three out of five on the scorecard. Is it non-irritating? This is very personal. I'm going to tell you my experience with it and share that with you. I do recommend and always recommend that you look at the ingredients list for yourself because what doesn't work for me might be fine on you and vice versa. I found this to be a little bit irritating, the new formula. The previous formula I never had a problem with. This formula, while it did go on and layer on top and even out the skin in the beginning of the day, by the end of the day, I could feel it on my skin. I don't wanna have to feel it. I don't wanna know it's there pretty much with all my makeup. I'm like, I just like my clothes. I don't wanna have to like fuss with them during the day. I felt dryness and I tested this for a week. So I wanted to make sure that I could attribute the dryness to this product. When I took it away, the dryness went away. So in the morning when I would apply it, even coverage, heavier coverage, and yes, it does kind of give more of a matte finish, whereas the previous one felt like it looked a little bit more moisturized. Not greasy, not oily, not dewy. There was a little bit more like life to the skin. Still, for oily skin types, this does give you that demi-matte kind of coverage. Whenever any foundation says satin or velvet finish, my skin usually doesn't respond super positively to that. It tends to just look dry on my skin. It never really feels dry, so this felt dry, and by the end of the day, there was a little bit of kind of feathering on top. Very subtle, it was less about the look, more about the feeling, and it just dried my skin out, so I would have to apply creams and stuff at night. I wasn't a fan of that, obviously. It got a two out of five on the scorecard. Does it last? I kind of alluded to this. It did stick around. I do an eight hour wear test, and I can show you how it looked at the end of the day real quick. Boom, shaka laka, shaka laka, shaka. It is the end of the day feeling not so fresh. It's been a long one. I digress. This is eight hours, natural light. <laughs> it looks a little funky, but that's just like pressing on my face today, which you're not supposed to touch your face. Besides that, coverage stuck around all day. However, the formula is drying. I had so much stuff on my face, so I had preliminary kind of face oil. I had blended together a couple of products with moisturizer to be testing them as well today. These were all underneath the foundation. Now it sat nicely on, but it just, I find it to be very drying. Blue. Anyway, mm. If it sticks around, great, but does it like look terrible by the end of the day? It didn't look terrible, it just didn't look great. So it got a three out of five on the scorecard. Is the shade range inclusive? It has 10 shades available. I purchased 03 in the new formula. That was the one that I got in the old formula. Loved it, it was like the perfect shade match. 10 shades for the second formula that it came out with. I was expecting to see more shades. Kind of underwhelmed with the number of shades. Also, I really want you to know that this shade matching was completely off. They do have a shade matcher tool. Do not do what I did. Use their tool because I was like, oh, in the new formula, I'll try three too. That'll work, that'll be fine. fine. No, it looked very Oompa Loompa. Just peachy yellow, took a lot of shearing out, and that's why the Kabuki brush also helps, but also just for evening out the application on the skin. We're all got a two out of five on the scorecard for shade range. I debated on that. Like that could potentially be a three that might be overly harsh. Ugh. At the end of the day, you gotta make a decision, right? I try. Is this a consciously created product? It has all the boxes ticked for cruelty-free, vegan, non-GMO, product packaging. This is glass. I can repurpose this. I can upcycle this. The packaging for the box, while they do use a cardboard box, the actual inside packaging is so minimal. I have an unboxing showing that. So they're doing a good job. I'm not gonna dive too deep into this, but before I would say, well, it's recyclable, it's fine. And then I was reading more information on recycling and how no one really is doing that consistently in the US at least. Really what I'm looking for here is more brands that have refills available and maybe they start putting out one universal container and then you can reorder, put it in a biodegradable bag. I can pop that into this beautiful glass container and be on my way. I'm gonna get a little bit harsher on that question. So now you know, it got a three out of five on the scorecard. Total score. Ooh. It was 16 out of 30. It was, it was a 16 out of 30. ASMR score. When I feel real bad about a score, I just whisper it. Not that Great. Let's wrap it up with the claims real fast. So long wearing. Yeah, I think it lasted a very long time. Did it look as good as I wanted it to by the end of that eight hour period? No, but did it stick around? Yes. Layers and mixes perfectly with skincare. 
Um, it applied well over prepped skin. Again, I did have to put a little more elbow grease into it with Kabuki brush. High pigment foundation, yes, very very high pigment. If you're looking for coverage, this is gonna give you a lot of coverage. If you have oilier skin, it might be better for you because of that semi-matte finish, but I'll get to that in one second. Pigment was very strong. Use the shade matcher. Just trust me. Has a perfect balance between satin and matte. I don't know what perfect is for you. It's probably different for you than it is for me. It was a satin, more demi-matte finish. It was not a glossy, dewy look. I think it did a good job there. It followed through on the claims. It was just, I was comparing it like they set themselves up, you know? When people come out with a sophomore album, first album was a total hit. Like, every song is perfect. That's how I felt about their first foundation. Huge fan. So the bar was really, really high with this, and I rarely see see things get kicked out of favorites. This new version, new and improved, not for me. That was my experience. For somebody, this might be the perfect foundation, you know? We all have different skin types, so take that into account, of course. Still, my final verdict here, would I repurchase this again? Am I gonna keep reaching for it? Those are the two things that I look at most when I apply the term favorites to a product. No, I'm not going to, that should not surprise you. Really bummed out that this didn't perform as well as the first foundation did for me. But yeah, no, I'm gonna go and use some other favorites that I have. If you would like to look at those, you can. They're under Brits Picks on the site, you can click the link below. If you've tried this, share your experience. Also include your skin type. That really helps because I'm only one skin type here, so it helps to have the community kind of chiming in like you guys do so, so well. And that's it, you know? Kind of a bummer. It just, it just didn't. It just, I didn't. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another video like it. I'm gonna go test some more stuff and I will be right back here real soon. Until then.